Okay, so in this exam, in this video, I want to go through a couple of problems. Actually, one one problem in this video, and then we'll do another one in the next video um, from from your titration problems page. So hopefully, you've got this page uh, titled "Titration Problems," uh, and we can work through a couple of examples on here. We're going to pick one out here in just a moment, but I want to point out here at the bottom on, on the front page, five, six, and seven are not exactly problems; they're more like just sort of short answer questions. And for now, I want to focus you on number seven. Okay, because for each neutralization or each titration reaction that you're going to look at on here, it's going to be the combination of an acid with a base. And while I won't ask you for an equation on every single one of the problems, it's important that you recognize that a general idea is that we're going to combine an acid with a base and get the similar get similar results each time. So I want to kind of just give you number seven and have you follow along with me on that and put your answers down for this as well and show how these are going to be similar throughout. So the general idea is that we're going to put an acid with a base Okay, each time. And you've done this with double replacement reactions already, so this should be somewhat familiar. And hopefully you remember that an acid with a base is a double replacement reaction that makes water and some other compound. And we usually call that a salt. Now I don't want to confuse that with regular salt, which is you know sodium chloride in our food and things, but a salt of some kind from a neutralization reaction. So that's our general idea for any one of these uh, titration uh, reaction problems that are that are on the sheet between an acid and the base. So the acid and the base, you should be able to fill these in on any one of the equations if you were asked to. And so in this example, in number seven, it asks me to write the equation for uh, what's happening between potassium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Well, obviously, hydrochloric acid is my acid, and that's a common one we use a lot, so that's HCl. And potassium hydroxide is KOH. Now, here's the key. When we have an acid reacting with a base, you're going to find that all acids, of course, start with that hydrogen. And all of our bases for our work on this page are going to be simple what we call strong bases, and they are going to have this hydroxide group on the end. And when those get together, of course, we make water. H plus OH becomes HOH, or H2O. And then a salt. In this case, that's the other stuff, which would be K with Cl, potassium chloride. So this is our general equation for number seven. But what I want to point out here is that when we look at this, it's going to be simple to balance most of these with ones. In other words, one acid unit and one base unit, or one mole of acid will combine with one mole of base most of the time. Okay, and those will combine to give me one mole of water and one mole of salt. But this one to one ratio that we're looking at here on the left side is important to recognize when we're looking at titrations because when that's the case, it makes our lives a little simpler. But when we have an acid or a base that has more than one, in the case of an acid that has more than one hydrogen in the front, or if we have a base that has more than one hydroxide group on the end of it, that's going to change how we approach these problems just a slight bit. And I won't show you one of those in this first example problem, but on the next one you're going to see a case uh, where you have to take that into account, where there's a base or an acid that's got a little extra double power, we'll say, to it. We'll get to that in a minute, but this is our general equation for any one of our, our um, neutralization reactions, titrations. And for our examples, more often than not, you're going to find that it's a one-to-one -one ratio. It's going to make it really simple to solve these. Okay, so keep that in mind. And let's look up here at number uh, four. So question number four says a known concentration of HCl is 0 0.520 molar. Look at this problem and recognize this in any one of our, our examples. You're going to be given some concentration that we know. So this is our known. We know the concentration of our acid is 0 0.520. And it labels it here as the known. It doesn't always say that explicitly. But in most of these problems, you'll be able to pick out the fact that you're given one of the molarities. So let's go back to that picture that we were using before. Okay, That's this one. The known is going to be up here. So for our example, in number four, the known is HCl. That's our acid, right? And so in my setup, in the initial, uh, in, the, in the burette up here, my known concentration is going to be HCl, okay? And it's a concentration of 0 0.520 molarity, okay? 0 0.520 molarity, all right? And then if you notice in the problem, it also says you record the following volumes on your burette. So it's telling me that at the beginning, we had 5.32 milliliters in the burette. 
Okay, so that's my initial volume reading, 5.32 milliliters. And remember, I mentioned in the last video that the numbers on these start at the top with zero and eventually work themselves down up to as big as 50. Okay, so in our example here, we start at 5.32. Our level at the beginning is, is it set at 5.32. And you'll find out in the lab that we don't always start at zero. It just doesn't always work out that way. But we start out at a volume of 5.32. And then it says the next volume that you record is 29.77. So when in these problems, occasionally, it gives you two volumes. You want to be able to look at those two and recognize that the two volumes you're given, 5.32 milliliters and the other one, 29.77 milliliters, are the initial reading here, 5.32, and the final volume, 20, let's check that again, 29.77 milliliters. Okay, so you started with 5.32, and you drained it down from here, okay, all the way down to here in the example picture, and in doing that, you went from 5.32 to 29.77. So it's important to know how much is this? How much did you use? And to get that, you simply subtract. Okay, so 29.77 milliliters minus 5.32 milliliters means that you drained it from 5.32 all the way down to 29.77. And to do that, you would have had to have lost, okay, how much? Well, do the subtraction. This isn't complicated to do, just subtract. 24.45 milliliters was used. Okay, 24.45 milliliters of my acid was used. Okay, drained out of the burette. So I used for my acid, okay, 24, let's check that number again, 24.45 milliliters. That was the amount, the volume that I actually used up in this reaction. Now it's saying that we titrated, we titrated 40 milliliters of the base. Now, where does that fall into my picture here? That means that down here in the, in the uh, flask, we have a known volume, remember? And that was 40 milliliters of my base. Now, again, does it tell me what the base is? Yep, NaOH is my base, right? So 40 milliliters of NaOH, whose concentration I don't know. And that's what I'm looking for, its concentration, okay? So I used 40 milliliters of that. Uh, and I used 24.45 milliliters of acid, so I used less acid and a little bit more of the base. And one of the concentrations I know and the other one I don't. Now the setup for this is really, really simple, okay? And this is the format I'd encourage you to use throughout. When you're setting these up, we're going to put the, the acid on the left and the base on the right. And there's important numbers you're going to use in each case. And I'll give you the long form here first. That is, we need the molarity of the acid. And we have that in this problem, so we're going to have that number to start with, times the volume of the acid. And we're going to set that equal to the molarity of the base times the volume of the base. Okay. So molarity times volume equals molarity times volume. Now I want to point out to you here that if that's the case, molarity times volume means molarity is moles per liter. And multiply moles per liter, let's see, moles per liter times a volume in liters. Molarity times volume is molarity, moles per liter times volume. And those are going to cancel out the liters, and I'm going to be left with moles. So essentially, the left side of this equation here, if we want to think about it this way, the left side of this is telling me, essentially, moles of acid. By multiplying those two things together, I get moles of acid. And on the right side, I do the same thing for base, and I get moles of base. Okay, that's going to be the result of multiplying molarity times volume. And so what we're saying here is moles of acid is equal to moles of base. That's kind of a way of substituting this in. Why is that important? When we neutralize an acid with a base, or the other way around, neutralizing means you've added the same number of moles of acid as you have moles of base, or vice versa. And so in this calculation, this problem, we're going to use this setup, molarity times volume equals molarity times volume. Acid on the left, and base on the right. Now a little bit of a shorter way to write that, we're going to abbreviate things. So for molarity, we're going to use a big M, and for the acid, we're going to put a little A behind it. And for the volume, we'll say a big V of acid, a little a behind it, so MAVA equals, on the other side, M of the base, molarity of the base, right, times volume of the base. 
So MAVA equals MBVB. That's about as easy as it gets. Really simple looking equation. And again, A for acid, B for base. Keep the acid ones together, keep the base ones together. And the good news is, as long as your volumes are both in milliliters, you don't have to convert them to liters. You don't have to have those things written in liters all the time, because in the end, the volumes are going to cancel out anyway, and we're going to be left with okay, moles on either side, because those volumes are going to cancel themselves out. The units, anyway, will cancel themselves out. So you don't need to change all your volumes into liters for this. It's much simpler if you don't. And I'll show you that on the calculations for this one. So let's plug in what we know, using that as our general equation. All right? The molarity of the acid, I know, is given as 0 0.520. So 0 0.520 molar. That's my MA. The volume of the acid used, we used, let's see, that's right here. All right? 24.45 milliliters of acid was used. And again, remember, just remember, we got that from uh, subtraction, right, on our picture here, from the numbers that they gave me in the problem. Now, you're going to find in most of the other problems on here that that subtraction's already been done, and you don't even have to bother. So it'll save you that trouble. On the other side, the molarity of the base is what we're looking for, okay? If you don't mind, I'm going to clean this up just a touch, get this stuff out of here so that it's not quite in our way, because I want to point out that that's what we're after. What is the concentration of the NaOH? That's our base. Okay, so they're looking for MB. That's my X, if, if you will. So in this problem, I'm going to just leave that as my unknown MB. And then my VB, volume of base used, it tells me I started out with 40 milliliters of NaOH. So 40 milliliters. Okay. Now, to solve this, it's relatively simple, right? Treat this as my X. I just basically divide both sides by 40. And you can go ahead and show that. I would encourage you to go ahead and show that. You at least need to show your MAVA equals MBVB setup with the numbers in those positions. And then if you know that dividing both sides by 40 will get you there, you can go ahead and just do that. But what I want to show you here is that the model, the, when I do the divide both sides by 40 milliliters, this all, of course, cancels off, and that leaves my MB alone, which is what I want it to do. And on the, on the left side of the equation, my milliliter units are going to cancel off. That's what I meant before. The volume units are going to go away. So if you convert those into liters, the same thing's going to happen, and you'll have done a bunch of extra work. So the milliliters will cancel out, they're gone, and we're going to be left with M, big M, molarity, as our label. Okay? So for number four, if I punch this into my calculator, my MB, in the end, comes out to be 0 0.318 molar. And remember, the molarity here that we're finding is of, of NaOH. So let's go ahead and label that as NaOH. And that's my answer in the end. Okay, We're looking for a molarity. And again, you're going to find this, this really general equation that we see here in the red is, our, is a really good tool for acids and bases. As long as the acid moles are on the left and the, and the moles of base are on the right, we can set those equal in a titration. And when it's a one-to-one -one ratio, it's really, really easy to do that. This equation would look a lot like the one that we started out this video with, except instead of in, in number seven, we have KOH. On number four, we have NaOH. Same kind of idea. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. The acid has one H out in front. The base has one OH group on the end. And that means these will combine in a one-to-one -one ratio and give us a final molarity of 0.318 molar NaOH. It's simply a matter of plugging in three out of four of these and solving for the fourth one. And you're going to find that we're almost always going to be asked to solve for a molarity because that's the whole point of titration. All right? When it gets right down to it, titrations are being used to determine the concentration of an unknown. That was from our last one. So we're trying to determine the concentration. That means you're either going to be solving for MA or MB. Whichever one you don't know, that's the one you're going to be looking for when you're doing the math. And here we solve for MB. In the next problem, we'll solve for MA, and you can see an example like that. So hopefully you got this one down. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.